Aloha everyone. I know it's a little bit dark from this angle, but good to see all of you. Those of you who uh, don't know me, my name is uh, Dr. Matt James, and so glad that you're here just joining on this Facebook Live. I am in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I wanted to just show you this angle because I had to show you the crazy amount of snow that we got on the ground. It's just absolutely amazing. I think there's about four feet of snow. I know downstairs, there's a whole bunch of snow down there. And I'm in Erie, hanging out with my kid, and it was snowing yesterday, which uh, a guy that lives in Hawaii, it's an interesting experience to have it be uh, snowing and whatnot here. But it's so neat. Lake Erie is right over there. You can see right across the lake, over to Canada. Canada's right over there. Those of you who are joining from Canada or watching the replay from Canada, so good to see you. It's been a while since I've been to Canada and just miss it a ton. Absolutely miss it a ton. And you know, please forgive, last week we had a little bit of a technological issue. Facebook has a lot of different ways to set up lives. Um, I just went live in the, in the regular old live place as opposed to in the exact place where I was supposed to go. So we set it up the right way, this way, or at least the way that makes it a lot easier for everyone. And hope that you, ho hope that you are able to join in. I already see a whole bunch of people logging in and saying hi. Hey, Sally, good to see you. Um, hope you're warm. Sally, hope you're warm. It's not warm here. It is freezing here. And for a guy that grew up in a warm environment, this is also fun shock for sure. So there's our weekly Facebook Lives. Those of you that are new that I haven't met, my name is Dr. Matt. You can you know, go to our homepage, nlp.com, or go check out my blog, nlp.com, uh, I'm on drmatt.com to check out more about me. I run events, trainings around the world, and you know, haven't been actually around the world for a while. Just been pretty much here in the US and getting some downtime, getting some downtime with the family. And you know, on my way after this, heading to Kansas City. First time that I ever get to go to Kansas City and, and teach a PRAC training. It's gonna be incredible. Those of you who are gonna be in Kansas City, look forward to meeting you there. So I wanted to start doing these Facebook Lives. A, a big question that I get asked all the time is, you know, can you connect more? Can you, you know, share some more of the NLP knowledge, the HUNA knowledge, to just help out along the way? And it's been a busy year and a half. Been doing a ton of stuff for a year and a half, and you know, we used to, as a company, as a team, do these regularly. And we did a whole bunch of meetings and just decided, let's jump into this. Let's jump into doing this again, going live and just doing some regular stuff. Now, I always ask myself, What's a good topic? What's something good to cover that is relevant, that will help people to really navigate the crazy shit that's going on out there in the world? Because we still got a level of craziness that is happening. Whether you're you know, here in the US, across Lake Erie over there in Canada, I just saw Sabrina Tosca log in. She's someone that I've known for well over a decade, lives in Italy. Stefan, good to see you. Whether you're in California, Texas, wherever you are, there's some craziness that's still out there. I hear a lot of things like people are reducing the mask mandates, they're lifting this, they're in some places like Canada. I have a client who lives in Canada who is like they're, they're locking things down again and they're, they're making things restrictive again. Well, we can't control what's out there. We can't control what's going on out there. We can only control ourselves. We can only control our reaction to it. Here's what I do know. Having studied the techniques that I teach, NLP, HUNA, MER, we're not gonna be able to control what's out there. You can only control you, your reaction. And what I've learned is that if you go in with a push, if you go in with an intensity, the tendency is for there to be an intensity back. You go and you push, someone's gonna push back, right? So I want to talk about something very simple, very basic. On some of these Facebook Lives, I want to go into out there weird shit, and sometimes I just want to keep it simple. Sometimes I just want to slow it down, keep it simple, and how do you just navigate day-to-day -day stuff? Well, in the practitioner training of NLP, we run 23 of those this year all around North America. We go virtual a couple of those times, so if you're outside of the US and you can't get here, we're gonna go virtual, you can jump on. 
we teach something on day one called the NLP presuppositions. NLP presuppositions are these basic ideas, this mindset behind successful individuals. So when NLP was first invented, they looked at how successful individuals navigated and operated day to day. Like how did they deal with craziness that goes on out there? How do they deal with a client who is bringing problems to them? How, how do they just deal with things so that they can stay the course and be a guide for others? And there's a whole bunch of these presuppositions. One of them just really, really kind of presented itself today. And it's the NLP presupposition that people are not their behaviors. People are not their behaviors. To state in a positive, people are more than that. They're not just a behavior. Thank you for the thumbs up on that one. I just, I want you to think about this for a moment. If you get like bogged down, you get locked into something and you think that person is and you label them, they can never be anything more than that. The whole idea of people are not their behaviors is really simple. So the people that invented NLP, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, they noticed that people who are inspiring, people who are influencers, people who help other people, they look at an individual and they don't see them as their behavior. They see them as more than that because you can help change a behavior. You can't change a person. People have behaviors, but the moment you tie the two together, you lock the person into being someone. Let me give you a, uh, an example that happened to me. Every kid, all of them, including mine, go through a phase where they're not 100% honest. It's called testing boundaries. It's the socialization phase. When you're a kid, you're kind of like going into this phase of, I'm gonna test this boundary and see where is it. During that phase, or sometime before that, a child will do something that we call lying. Lying is where you don't tell the truth. Omission of the truth. Okay, so as a doctor of psychology, I knew that that was gonna happen. I know that kids do this. Well, sure enough, one day, Ethan comes home, my son, he's 22 now, and so this was, you know, about 15 years ago, and he comes home and he says, Dad, I, I, I'm in trouble. The teacher asked me something. I lied. I'm so sorry, Dad. I'm a liar. And I thought for a moment, I stopped and I went, okay, he did a behavior of lying. All kids do that. Shit, adults do that, you know? We tell a little lie or a white lie. I just wanna hurt their feelings. Also want him to avoid doing it with big things. I'd rather find, I would rather find a way to help him, you know, exhibit new behaviors. Uh, for example, if someone says to you, how's your day and it's not good, why lie about it? Why lie and say it's going great? Why not just say, I'd really not talk about it right now, or I'm processing right now how my day is. To lie and say, I'm having a great day when you're really not, that really puts that energy out there of you not being truthful. It goes against some of the basic teachings at Huna. I, I taught both of my kids, if you don't feel like talking about how your day is, it's okay to say to someone, hey, let's talk about this later. I'm just really going through something right now. I'm processing it. I'm going to be okay. That's truthful. I'm going to be great. Hey, just give me a moment. That's a much better approach, right? So I'm thinking all these things in a flash. And Ethan says to me, sorry for being a liar. And my immediate response was, buddy, you're not a liar. Yes, you lied. And let's talk about how do you navigate that to have a different behavior? See, if I bought into that label and went, yeah, you're a liar and liars are bad. I just made him the behavior. Uh, basic NLP understanding, you can't change a person. You can just change their behaviors. The moment you do this to yourself, let's talk about you. The moment you label yourself, I'm a bad dad. You know, let's say you don't have a great moment as a dad. You say you're a bad dad, you are now that thing. And you can't become more than that. Uh, one of the sayings that I have out there as a quote is, whatever you think you are, you're more than that. And you get caught up in these labels we sometimes take the behaviors that we have and we give us that or give ourselves that label and what that does is it prevents us from getting beyond it. See, I believe and I teach how to do this in the NLP trainings, you can change a behavior. We teach that how to do that. People change their behaviors all the time. Look, no one wanted to wear a mask two years ago. 
And now some people miss their masks if they no longer have to wear it. Uh, before September 11th, you could go to the gate with the person and say goodbye. We change behaviors all the time. The moment you make yourself the behavior, you prevent, prevent yourself from being able to change. You prevent yourself from being able to grow. In addition to that, when you make someone else a behavior, when you make someone else a behavior, it kind of can derail your day. Driving over here is interesting. Yeah, I didn't grow up with snow. And there is a shit ton of snow out there right now. I'm not allowed, allowed to say that on Facebook. Please forgive me. There's a bunch of snow out there. And I've had to learn how to drive on snow. And some people here, they drive crazy on snow. And some people drive very conservatively. I'm kind of in the middle. Um, not freaked out by it. And I have had the wheels skid out a little bit and go, hmm, that's a different than how it is when we're at home. I just keep looking out at the snow. It's just so amazing. Well, let's say I get cut off. That can happen. Any of you been cut off before? Get cut off on the road, you're driving, this person cuts you off, and if you go, you jerk, you a-hole, you bad person, you sh driver, whatever it is, any of those things that you say, the moment you say that, you're making them the behavior. All right, maybe they are. Maybe they're a horrible driver. Maybe they're a bad person. Maybe they had it out for you. I've met people that that one thing can derail their entire day though. They made the person the behavior. Rather than, why not just play a game in your head? Why not just have fun with it? Well, how many of you ever had lunch and you thought it was a good idea to double down on that burrito? You have the second one. You're thinking it's good. You get in the car and all of a sudden you realize you need to get home as quickly as you possibly can because that lunchtime burrito is about to explode. I love the laugh emojis popping up. I, I have I have had that, any of us have, we've all had that moment where we ate the wrong thing and we're like, I need to get back to the office, I need to get home or to the nearest gas station, whatever it is that I need to do. And we've driven in a crazy way, just trying to get, <laughs> that's Guillermo, two burritos, it can happen. You're just trying to get home because it's just gonna be safer if you're home. You had something, your stomach's not feeling well, you're not sure where it's gonna come out, but it's definitely on the way. And you just drive in a very tense way going home. I'm sure you cut someone off and, and made them grumpy. So I play a game in my head, and this may sound crazy, and maybe this is an overshare for you guys. And my marketing team may choose to not replay this one, but I don't care, I'm having fun. I'm driving and someone cuts me off. I got two options. I got really two options. Number one, label them, make it a bad moment, and really just derail my day. Talk about it the rest of the day, share with my kids how they're crappy drivers here and everywhere. Or I can just sit there and go, man, I've been there. I've been there where I need to find a toilet fast. Good luck, let me get out of the way for you and hopefully you get there as quickly as you can. It just, you get a laugh and you move on. I think you gotta do the same thing with yourself. You gotta sometimes just say to yourself, all right, I had a bad moment there. I had a difficult moment, I wasn't at my best, I was doing the best that I possibly could with the resources that I had, and I'm gonna give myself a pass on this one and do better tomorrow. Yeah, it's that whole Hawaiian idea of kino ole, to just continuously up it. Do your best and do better the next day and the next day and so on. So people are not their behaviors. Fancy way of saying people exhibit behaviors and it doesn't make them anything, it's just a behavior. You can change a behavior, other people can change a behavior. You can't if you make the person the behavior though. You separate the person from the behavior, you can change it. Laugh at the person cutting you off. I hope this Facebook Live was funny for you because the next time someone cuts you off, you're gonna think of two burritos. Think of the same thing the next time you do something you wish you had them. Just think, been there, done that, I'm gonna solve this, I'm gonna fix it, and avoid turning you into the problem. Sally said, you must have been in my head this morning. I needed this reminder today. I'm glad, Sally. Well, this Facebook Live was for you, not for anyone else. So thank you all for joining. I'm gonna be here again next week. What is that old saying? I'm really old. If I can say same bat time, same bat channel. So see you all next week at 1 Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern because that's the time zone I'm in right now. All right, aloha. Love you all. Bye-bye.